very get back into focus thank you hello lovelies hello i'm back <laughs> it's leslie not quite enough yarn podcast this is my gorgeous assistant beverly hello I am here yet again to entertain you all with the Laurel and Hardy look-alike show. This is a podcast about knitting, spinning, yarn, crochet stuff, recorded on the south coast of the UK. I record throughout the month and then put all the clips together and post on the last weekend of the month. We are getting towards the end of the make-along, and this is actually, September is the last month of the make-along. This is the modification mal, so any pattern that you're changing length, width, stitch count. Oh, now I'm trying to think of something complicated. Um, <laughs> put it into the uh, post, the thread on Ravelry. If you can't use Ravelry, please email me at notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com. I am going to slap her in a moment. <laughs> I will not be drawing during this podcast. I'm going to wait till October so that I can get everything in until the end of the month rather than miss the last few days. So good luck if you're taking part. Thank you to everyone who has posted an entry on there. And I will be in touch next month with winners and stuff. So, yay! Shall I do some knitted stuff? Yes, go for it. I don't do knitting, so this is all foreign language to me. So I just sit here making funny faces and nod and sign while little sis does all the blur. You could try it on if you want to. Go on then, I'll be your model. You'll be my model. I so am the model. Today so I do be... It's a cow that goes on. Oh, right, I can put it over my head. I, don't, don't, I thought it was an extra large mitten. Right, today I am modelling this. Ready? Yeah, leave it there. No. Um, <laughs> Cheek of it. So this cowl... Oh, I feel like Mrs. Tishel in Doc Martin. With my neck brace. Okay. So this, it can also be worn folded over to give a nice, thick, warm cowl. Um, with Bev wearing it, it can be worn like this. That's the better one. Yeah, but you make yourself comfy. Yeah, I'm comfy. Yes, don't be silly. So... <laughs> So this is made from the last hand spun that I made and that was a braid of 100% superwash merino from Coral Rose Fibre Arts which Coral had very kindly sent to me so thank you very much and it's a classic three ply 161 meters 13 wraps per inch and the cowl, I can't remember how many stitches I cast on. It would either be 100 or 120, because that's my usual. And then I just did broken ribs. So one row knit, one row knit, one purl one. And it does give both textures. So you've got the slightly smoother one on what Bev's got as the outside. And then a bit more obviously textured on the inside. Oh dear goodness. Right. So, <laughs> so that's this is my, my new career. I am a model. And as himself would normally say, an airfix model. Yes. Yes. So this is the project that um, those who saw my health update earlier in the month, um, this was the one I got stuck on. This was the one I started when I first went into hospital after the first stop when everything was going well. I was walking up and down the ward knitting on it. <coughs> and then as soon as everything started going wrong, I just couldn't face knitting. But I kind of made myself do it when I got home. It's now finished. It will be a useful dog walking, dog walking item. And as Bev's the one doing the dog walking at the moment, that would work. So it's mine. So I've, it's, I've claimed it's it. It's hand wash. That's okay. Okay, right. Yeah, I'll send it down to you when I need washing. Okay, lovely. That's now Bev's. So that's the first item. Now the second one, I'm going to test your memory. Oh, crikey. <laughs> Do you remember when we were young? No, because I don't remember you when we were young. This is true. We shared a room for two oh, years. She, I don't know. 
I'm just sitting here because it's a nice day and the door's open and it's lovely. This is an art related question. Okay. Do you remember we used to do sunset pictures? And we used to do a sun up in the corner and then we'd, it's just, I'm getting a very blank look here. And then we used to get our colouring pencils or our felt tip pens from yellow to red and we used to sort of start off with yellow and then do orange round and then red. You have no memory of this whatsoever, do you? No. And then we'd get black or dark brown and we'd sort of put in a silhouette of hills and trees and that. it'd be a sunset. No. You sure it wasn't Big Sis? No, it was you. Big Sis was working. Do you know, I, I, I will openly confess to all of Leslie's readers, listeners, subscribers, viewers, viewers I have absolutely minimal recollection of Leslie as a child. And you wonder why I'm so needy now? Don't know why. Obviously, something happened that made me want to block that part of my life out. But I just have very, very limited memory. And yet, the reality is, I'm the one that could tell the stories of um, yes, we unfair know what, treatment. Yes, I'm not going to. Yes, we know what you're going to say. No, I'm. I'm just. It was say. a windy day in Chartham that day. That's all we say. But no. I don't remember painting sunset pictures with you at all. We well, may have done them with me, but we both used to do them. No, I cannot remember. Anyway, I took inspiration on. from that. <laughs> See, I obviously am in her memory, even though she's not in mine. Yes, well, maybe not for good reasons. No, that's it. <laughs> so, anyway, I... It's very nice. Thank you. Do you know, that reminds me, when I was a child, we used to do sunset paintings and we used to put yellows and orange and then do silhouettes. Arsenal. Um, I was inspired by this to make sure. That's nice, actually. Thank you. Well, you, you hold it. Thank you. So I'm going to tell the lovely people all about it. This was a make it up as I go along shawl, but it was based on a half pie shawl. Okay. <laughs> so the basic pie shawl, and this is an Elizabeth Zimmerman creation, but there are lots of patterns available for them, is that you, in, you start at the, the middle, because the original pie shawl was a complete circle. You start in the middle, you increase by doubling the number of stitches in your rows and then between each increase row as you get larger you double the amount of rows so it might be 10 between the first two, 20 between the next two, 40 between the next two and so on. I get bored easily. I wonder where that comes from. So I thought I would start from the bottom. So I started by doing the edging, casting on a lot of stitches, and then doing decreases. And the decreases became more frequent. So the edging, and I'm gonna grab this for a second so I can show the lovely people. So I did the edging first. That's worked side to side. And this is from a shawl that I made some time ago called Maluka. And I can't remember the name of the designer, but I do know it's no longer available. So I'll, I'll put the Ravelry link below, but um, unfortunately it's no longer available. And I made the rest up as I went along. So I started playing around with lace patterns. <laughs> um, but it was really just a function of what do I fancy doing now? So there's no real pattern. The only pattern is the decreases, but the rest is just what do I fancy working on. And as a non-knitter I do know that the holes are not where she's dropped stitches, they are created on purpose. Thank you for your That's reassurance. For my little bit of input. Thank you. So yarns. So the red which I started with, thank you, is by Urban Pearl and it's Waterloo Sunset is the colourway. It's their Lux High Twist Sock. It's 80% merino, 20% silk. So I'm not sure I'd use it for socks, even if it's high twist, but it feels very nice. And I used 237 metres of that. Okay. There we go. The next one is a lace weight yarn that I used doubled. This is also called Sunset. 
it's by Wool and More and I used 18 grams of that and because it's doubled it was 144 meters and then the top one is Undercover Rotter Singularity in the failsafe colorway and I used 15 grams of that which is 55 meters so that is my half pie shawl I can't remember what stitch uh, what row needle size I used even I think it was a three and a half millimeters because I wanted it quite drapey with four ply or fingering weight yarn so that's um that's my second fo which is there finished you go. okay I thought it was a free offer no so oh, right okay. none of that sort of thing going on here so how have you been since we last saw you Bev well do you know I have been fine in myself but somebody obviously decided they wanted to give me a bit of stress in my life and a bit of worry so for a little while we were on tender hooks big sis and I over little sis and her little bit of activity shall we say what my consultant called attention seeking behavior well I didn't like to say that but now you've said it yeah that's exactly what we thought mm. so we thought that's it you know we're getting all the attention obviously the feedback from the last vlog was just how amazing I am and I think somebody got a little bit jealous so to just to you know make a point about it they decided to put us through a few traumatic hours and days but I have to say joking aside it's lovely yeah it's lovely that she's here with us and I'm able to come back and sort of little bit get your own back time because I'm here as it's nursey nursey Bev today now I don't know if you've seen one flew over the cuckoo's nest but uh... I haven't either so that okay. has gone All completely right. over my head I'm afraid it's yes. not very nice nurse oh yeah that's that's probably about right then yeah so no I've been good but obviously with Les and her health stuff um it was a little bit concerning for us for a little while and we've decided to let would you call him himself 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 have a break so it's been a fact for years that whenever I've come to visit, himself has always gone out. So the other weekend I came to visit Les in hospital and I actually stayed here so himself could go and watch a football match and I looked after lovely Heidi puppy dog. Um, and now I've come back and himself has gone away for the weekend but I'm actually staying here for a week to do what I can to help albeit a bit of gardening, bit of indoor work, whatever, take her out and about, get her out into the sunshine. I made her walk up the road last night, which I don't think she liked very much. So all in all, it is good. Thank you. See, as, as I said in my health update, I had reached a point where I was ringing both sisters to tell them I loved them. Yeah, we didn't believe it then. Well, the eldest one was very much, we love you too. Yeah. This one was texting me five minutes later. So you do realise in a week I'm going to be taking the mickey out of you for that. Yeah. And I said, that's all right, I'll blame the drugs. Yeah, yeah. But, yes, that, that's kind of the relationship we have, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you? I have no idea. No? Okay. No. Yeah. The drugs Sorry, are good. my stomach's rumbling here as well. <laughs> oh, there were three of us talking. No, no okay. okay. <laughs> yes. So, yes, it's lovely to have Bev here. She's been, she's an absolute grafter. Because yesterday, while I was having a little snooze... She was chopping back overgrown things in the garden and we're going to have a ride out to the tip to get rid of the garden rubbish. We know where um, to live. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there will be a cup of tea involved in that because it's next to the garden centre where uh, there will be tea and cake or tea and lunch. Or We have to do cake. Yeah. Definitely. Well, we said that last cake. time, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, cake. Yes. Whenever Les and I are together, there has to be cake. That is the golden rule of anything in she life. She brought her own this time because she thought I wouldn't have yeah. any and she was right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yes. So, um, so, yes, so Bebby is here for the week. Uh, we are looking like having good weather, whereas himself, who is in Manchester to watch cricket, isn't going to see a ball being struck because um, it's pouring hard with rain there. I have said enjoy the lovely art galleries and museums, but I think they're probably going to pubs instead. Mm. Sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Given so. the company is keeping, it does yes. sound very right. Yeah. Yes. I think so. it's highly probable. Yes. yes. So... Um, Unless it's a museum of pubs. Yeah. And then they would go to a museum. No, that's... Yeah. He he once went with a friend... On our wedding anniversary, he went with a friend on a brewery tour. So 
you know. That's yeah. him. That's it. That's I don't him. encourage romantic behaviour, but I'm not sure I wanted him to go that far in the yeah, other direction. But that's anyway. it. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, so that's uh, that's where we're at at the moment. I had started knitting hats because I found out that my chemo is uh, likely to result in hair loss. So, um, so I'm knitting a balaclava for Bev with no holes. And um, <laughs> no, I'm not knitting you a no, balaclava. No. no, no, no. No, I've already got one. Okay. Then. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've started knitting hats, so that will probably be the next few projects that you see, and um, we'll crack on. Yes, absolutely. Marvellous. Back to work, because I've been allowed to sit down for five minutes, and now I've got to get on again. Can't have a slacking. No, absolutely not. You know, if she expects feeding while she's here, then I'm afraid that's got to be earned. Yes, absolutely. I know my place. And even the dog doesn't get treatment like that. No, no, no. no. So. But there we go. Lovely to see you all again. And I'll see you in the next clip. And I'll see you in the next few months, no doubt. Probably. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Hello, lovelies. I have a few small finished objects to show you. And the first is the latest of the crochet squares that I've made. This is from the Jan Eaton book of 200 crochet squares, crochet blocks, something like that. Uh, This is called Circle in a Square. And the yarns are various bits of acrylic weight, um, no, acrylic fibre, four ply fingering weight yarns. And I think I'm using a three or a three and a half for these. So I will be carrying on with those slowly. I'll give a a health update such as we know uh, later in the podcast but one thing we do know is because I'm going to be having some chemotherapy it's hat time well also it's getting into autumn it's hat time so I've made a couple and here is the first so a rare excursion into colour work for me it's not something I do that often but this is the death flake hat by Rebecca Stewart Designs. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's based on the Death Flake mittens which are by someone else. I'll add the details below. Um, Me being me, the whole knitting or death, staying on brand, I had to do something with a slightly sort of darker side element. So it's got skulls. Actually, the way the colours have changed on that, they look more like pieces of fruit. But anyway, so this hat was made with three millimetre needles. Not that it matters because it depends what gauge you get. The yarn, um, I don't actually know what the background yarn is. It's It was in the same bag of yarn as the crochet squares. Um, so it's some generic acrylic cream coloured. Quite soft feeling. Yeah, perfectly pleasant. The colour work was Noro and it was Noro Teo Sock. Colourway number is 17S and it did give a nice colour change. Noro is not a smart choice for colour work um, because it goes thick and thin. So this isn't as even as some you'll see. I will show you my floats. Now I tend to do very short floats. My floats tend to be kind of three stitches max. So very short floats, but apparently it's the law that when you do colour work, you have to show your floats afterwards. So those are mine. Um, Quite happy with how it turned out. I don't do colour work very often, so um, my expectations were low and I've exceeded them. So that's good. Pattern fairly straightforward to follow. Nearly forgot my own rule of putting a marker between each repeat. There are four repeats, I think it is, of the motif. And I was thinking, oh, I'm getting in a pickle. And then I thought, follow your own advice, Leslie. Put a marker between each repeat and you're golden. So there we were. Um, The other thing with this colourway is it does go very pale in places. So the contrast doesn't stick out as much as I might like. But it's okay. I think I've got away with it. Um, I used 21 grams of that, which is about 88 metres. And the white 
approximately, well, I don't know what this is, approximately 100 metres. So 188 for the hat and I'm very happy with it. So that's hat number one. Hat number two. Again, slightly slouchy. Now this is based on Harvest by Tin Can Knits, another free pattern on Ravelry. And it's a pattern that's available in several yarn weights, but this is the sock weight version. Used the same number of stitches as the Deathflake hat, so I knew it would fit, or had a good idea it would fit. Um, but I didn't follow the Harvest design for its patterning. Harvest, like a lot in that particular range from Tin Can Knits, has a garter stitch panel. I didn't want to do that, so I went to my stitch pack directories, my Barbara Walker in this case, the first one, the blue one, and I found the quilted lattice pattern. And it's one of those patterns that looks quite complicated, but is actually very simple and very quick to memorise. So it's a simple slip stitch pattern. And I thought it worked well with the variegation in this yarn and also kind of hid any pooling because you've got these strands going across, it kind of breaks up any pooling or flashing. The yarn is Twink Knits. I will put the link for their Etsy shop down below. I'm a fan of Twink Knits because of the colors that they choose. Um, this is coming up a little bit on my camera screen. It's coming up a little bit sort of redder, but it's kind of neon rainbow. So what's not to like? So like I say, Harvest by Tin Can Knits with a stitch pattern from Barbara Walker, which I just had to convert from straight to in the round, which basically meant taking off the plus stitches because it was a multiple of six plus three and I needed a multiple of six. So that was, uh, fortuitous find. I did get, it was so easy I got a bit bored. By the time I was getting to the end of this I'm like yeah I'm done now. So I then moved on to the um, the crown decreases. I didn't even attempt to keep the pattern going. I thought I'd just work a plain crown decrease and here is my slightly slouchy hat. I'm fairly happy with the fit. <laughs> Hard to tell at the moment as I'm struggling to put it on. I'm fairly happy with the fit. A little bit slouchy, but you can always make it shorter. And I'll probably use this idea again of using this as the basis, using the numbers from the harvest pattern, but then adding a stitch of my choice. So, so those are two of the hats. Uh, the third one will be crocheted. I've just started that. So you may see it this month or you'll see it next month. So. Now, people who have been watching the podcast a long time will know that it started as my attempt to use up the stash. And it's called Not Quite Enough Yarn because I have lots of single skeins, single balls of colour because I buy things because they're pretty. I don't think I've... It's very rare for me to have bought a sweater quantity of anything. So I like to put things together. This, this is how I craft. Long-time viewers will also know that much as it's been my attempt to reduce my stash, people are lovely and they keep buying me stuff, not least himself, my beloved. But I came home from the hospital to gifts and I was a bit overwhelmed by the cards and the messages and the gifts and it was a couple of days before I could open them because I was just a little bit, well, like I say, overwhelmed. And as I was opening them, I t opening them, I turned to himself and said, why are people so much nicer than me? So, so I have some lovely gifts here to show. I am not going to mention who they're from because that's between them and me. Obviously, I have thanked them personally, but I want to show you the lovelies. So I opened here some lovely yarn which is from Attic Spin Dye. 
and this is Romeo and Juliet in their superwash merino and silk 50-50 and it feels just as you hope it would. So this will definitely be a hat because it will be lovely and soft against a bald head. I said to himself, will you still love me when I'm bald? He said, yes, of course. And I said, well, that seems only fair because he lost his hair a long time ago. But anyway, I digress. So beautiful pinks, blues, lilac into purple here. Absolutely gorgeous and it feels wonderful. So I'm looking forward to making a hat from this and wearing that hat, of course. So thank you to that lovely person. Another lovely person sent me this fabulous yarn from Old Rusted Chair. This is their Squish Base, which is 100% Superwash Merino in the Rebel Girl colourway, which was a political statement uh, when it was made to do with some of the law changes in the USA. So I look forward to making stuff with that as well, because it's great. You've got orange, we've got green, we've got purple, we've got a fabulous royal blue, we've got a, an amazing pink here. Lovely colours. And I've never used any old rusted chairs, so I'm very much looking forward to that. And then I also received fibre. So I've got this lovely braid here from a friend. And this is from Blarney Yarn Roving. It's 100% organic Polworth, two ounces of Cirque, as in circus, as in the French word for. Is it circus or circle? Like Cirque du Soleil, you know what I mean. So red, orange, deep sort of plum, aubergine sort of colour here. Really looking forward to spinning that. And it feels very nice. And there was this box as well from a lovely friend who is, I'm sure, a much better friend than I deserve. Thank you, lovely person. Because knowing that I love all the brights, it means a dyer that I'm particularly fond of is uh, Tracy Mustard of what M Mustard made. So my lovely friend got me this fabulous collection. Now it came with some stickers. I'm gonna try and show you the stickers because I've just tried to record and it's not working well. So let's try holding them up against this background and see if that makes any better. I have to deliberately cover my head. Yay, they cry. Um, because otherwise the camera will try and focus on my face. Well, we have some stickers. And we have fibre. My goodness, do we have fibre. We have a box of fibre. Look at this. What beautiful colours, what a generous gift. I, what can I say? I, you can see why I was overwhelmed. It was just all a bit much when I first came home, but I am extremely grateful and people are lovely. And like I say, I've had so many messages and I've had cards and emails and all sorts of stuff. So if I haven't got round to thanking everyone, you have my thanks, you have my gratitude. It's all been wonderful in a really odd way or odd in a really wonderful way. Take that whichever way you like. So I then had a friend come to visit who very kindly gave me this fabulous crochet hook um, she didn't buy this for me. She had bought this and found it didn't suit her. It didn't fit comfortably in her hand. So she's offered it to me to have a try. But she has also included this lovely Earth Yarns. And it is the Earth Yarns Spiral Grain. Light worsted in colour sugar pine. So predominantly green but with blues, oranges purples, all sorts of gorgeousness. So that is a lovely thing. And then himself went away. I had my sister staying for a week to take care of me. Well, basically to walk the dog and carry anything heavy. 
I did feel a bit guilty because if we went shopping, she had to carry it all in and I'm just like Lady Muck then. Oh yes, if you could put that on the kitchen counter, I'll put it away in a moment. Thank you. It was, yeah. Um, it didn't sit comfortably with me, but she didn't mind. But himself was away and he decided to buy me some yarn while he was away from a Fred Alder shop, which says make anything. And they have branches in Manchester, Leeds and Sheffield. He was in... Manchester and Leeds. I think it was Leeds that he bought this. So the first one he bought is Rico Design Luxury Hand Dyed Happiness in Chunky. And this has hat written all over it. It's uh, 100 grams virgin wool. I think winter hat rather than when I have no hair hat, but um, it is gorgeous. It's colour number, I think, 002. But again, we have the brights and the neons and all the pretties. So that's a lovely thing for him to buy. He then also got me, who's this by? I think this could be Rico as well, but the, yeah, Rico Fun Alpaca Cotton Blend. So this is 36% alpaca, 29% polyamide, 25% cotton and 10% polyester. And that's a lovely soft boucle, lots of fun colours in there. 120 metres for 50 grams. Very soft, lovely. And then he got me two balls of Wool and the Gang, Summer Haze Stripe and Blue Sky Stripe. And this is 70% baby alpaca, 7% merino, 23% recycled nylon. And the summer haze stripe. It's coming up a little bit brighter on my camera screen. This is more towards a sort of rusty red with a lilac pink, nice sort of dusty green, and the blue. Very pretty. That's coming up more accurately. Um, I don't know what size yarn this is, but it recommends a five millimeter. It feels it's not as not as solid as the chunky yarn. So I'm guessing it's kind of Aran or Aran towards um, Chunky. But either way, how pretty, how lovely. And again, lovely and soft. So. so my cupboards are not getting any less full. And do I look sad? Funny that. Um, so I've been very spoilt. And like I say, I have thanked the individuals who have giving me those lovely things um, and himself knew he was being done a favour by being allowed to go away for a week. I mean, it's my sister he owes the favour to, not me, but he's he's not daft. Um, so yes, uh, a very, um, very nice set of new toys to play with. So, I'll catch up with you later. Cheers. Hello lovelies. I've been very confused over the last few months for various reasons and as such I'm trying to compensate for that by doing the following. I, at the end of June I think, drew the prize winner for the quarter two draw and um, I don't think it's been claimed but as I was out of action for a while it's possible that someone tried to get hold of me and I didn't respond. So I'm going to say their name again. And if it's not claimed by the end of October, so let's have a quick look at the calendar, 25th of October, I will draw it again. So if this isn't claimed, I will draw the quarter two prize and the overall prize at the end of October. If it is claimed in the meantime, then if you had claimed it previously and I wasn't aware of it apologies and if you hadn't claimed it previously well you got lucky this time good on you so the winner was Tony 810 who is Tony from Queens New York who made the prairie socks by Kay Jones and added a ruffle to them that was the modification so Tony if you're there please get in touch claim your yarn prize which is the skein from Folkestone Harbour Yarns that I bought uh, at a local craft fair. It's a sock yarn, 75-25, 425 metres. 
and I also got some stitch markers which are little beach huts so yes please do claim them and if I don't hear from Tony as I say that will be claimed uh, that will be redrawn at the end of October I hope that all makes sense like I say things have been confusing recently but are calming down now so we'll hopefully get back on track cheers hello lovelies I have a mystery which is involving me throwing things around obviously stay I have received a gift and I am very grateful for this gift and I would like to say to the person thank you for this gift but unfortunately I don't know who it's come from it's come from a company called Peace with the Wild they're a UK business based in Doncaster and I have received these wonderful milk chocolate fairies not focusing because my head's in the way so whoever very kindly sent these milk chocolate fairies to me thank you very much please let me know who you are because I'd like to thank you personally there's no paperwork there's no label the paperwork just is their dispatch note so it's got all my details on but I know them already so so if you are the very kind sender of those chocolate fairies thank you and please let me know because I'd like to say thank you personally so thanks it's a nice mystery to have isn't it that's going to be it for this week uh, this month not going to be terribly long um for probably fairly obvious reasons I do have two more hats on the go, one knitted and one crocheted, so I'll show you them next month and might be wearing them next month because we'll move now into a quick health update, I won't uh, go on too long. Uh, everything is progressing as it should, I was given a bit of time to rest given the amount of surgical procedures that I've had. Um, but obviously you can't leave it too long before you start chemotherapy and that's going to start in early October so when you see me at the end of next month I may be looking a bit different thanks to the medication I've been given and whatever happens to my hair the medication I'm being given will cause hair loss so we know that it will go at some point but we don't know how quickly we don't know whether it'll just sort of thin out or whether it will all go or whether I'll just get cross with it and say to my eldest sister who used to be a hairdresser come and take the rest off that was likely to happen. We know what my patients' levels are like. So, yeah, so that starts, um, like I say, early October and we'll go on for six sessions, three weeks in between each one, assuming everything goes to plan. Um, all this will depend on my health, how I'm reacting to the treatment, making sure that at each session I'm well enough to have the treatment that they want to give me. So we've got a bit of a long haul ahead of us, but it's a situation that many, many, many people have been in, are in, will be in, and they come through fine. So that's the approach I'm taking. I know it's going to be horrible. And a friend very wisely said to me, at one point, you're going to wish you weren't doing this. And I know she's right. But I also know that this is the best chance of making sure that I'm cancer free for as long as possible. So always got to give it your best shot if you can. And this is a chance I would regret not taking. So that's what will be happening. Apart from that, not much planned. Um, again, understandably. Better start some Christmas preparation. I do actually have some friends that since COVID we haven't exchanged gifts with. And that's kind of worked for us because there's not much stuff we want. We never know what to get them. But I was joking with them saying, well, I'm going to have to knit all my Christmas presents this year because I'm going to have time on my hands. And they immediately came up with ideas of what they'd like. So I think I'm going to have to contact them and say, I am making you these gifts, but they are not Christmas gifts because we do not require anything in return. And that also gets me off the hook for not getting them to them 
for Christmas if I'm delayed. We shall see. But yes, it's it's getting to that time of year. Um, yeah, so Christmas there, it's out there. It's been mentioned. There we go. I will be doing some gift knitting at some point. <sighs> Better had, hadn't I? And also thinking about what to do for Vlogmas this year, which I do intend to do probably weekly, same as I did last year. And I have an advent to finish and finish putting together and send off. That's an advent swap. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to lots of good stuff. And just hoping that the next few months physically aren't too demanding. But if they are, I will just sleep a lot. It's my default setting. Anyway, enough of all that. I hope you're all well. I hope life is treating you all kindly. Thank you so much for being here. Um, please feel free to leave a message. I am working my way through responding to everyone, even if it's just a simple thank you. Um, and I certainly do read every message. So um, if you'd like to leave a comment, please do so. And I will see you at the end of October when I will draw the grand prize for the modification mail as well as, if it hasn't been claimed, the quarter two prize as well. And then we'll be getting ready. I'll have a couple of months without a make along. I do intend to do the December along again. So that will just be a little bit of crafting every day, hopefully, when you can. I mean, life isn't always that straightforward, but the idea is to have a little bit of time every day for a bit of crafting. And it's just a take part and hopefully win a prize thing. It's not a specific, big project or a specific pattern or style of work it's just hopefully helping people to find a bit of me time every day for a bit of crafting but that will be December we have October and November to go and it's at the end of October that I'll see you so thanks everyone take very good care of yourselves I'll see you soon cheers bye bye <laughs>